chapter 4, section 2. In 4.1, we took a look at the graphs of trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, etc. And we looked at how if you multiply the graph by a number, that that can change the amplitude of the function. Or if you multiply the variable that the sine or cosine is applied to before you apply the function to it, that that can sort of change the scale or change the um, multiply and having a multiplicative effect in the in the um, x direction instead of the y direction. So now what we're going to look at in 4.2 is not a multiplicative effect, not growing the amplitude or growing the period, but instead uh, horizontal and vertical translations. And so a translation different than making the function appear sort of bigger or smaller, the function, the, the graph of the function appears exactly the same, but it simply slides to the left or to the right in a horizontal translation, or it shifts or slides up or down in a vertical translation. And so you can do one or some combination of the two of these uh, when you are modifying a graph um, of a trig function. All right, so what happened in 4.1 is we multiplied trig functions or their input variables. And what causes translations is when you add or subtract from the function or from the input variable. That's what causes the function to the shift left or right or up or down. So we're going to begin with uh, horizontal translations. And in this uh, pictured example here, what we can see is that they're showing the function might be shifted over to the right and still have sort of the same shape and picture, or maybe it might be shifted to the left. So now we're talking about a horizontal, meaning a right or a left shift, or you can think of it as a shift along the x-axis. And what you may recall from 4.1 is that when we affected the variable before the function was applied to it. Like if you took x and multiplied it by 3 before you put it into a trig function. But we kind of had the opposite effect of what we would expect. By multiplying by 3 on the variable, we saw that it actually shrunk the period and made it smaller. Whereas when you multiply outside of the function, it made the amplitude bigger. And so it kind of has an opposite effect. The same thing's going to happen here. So what they're showing on the left here is that if I add 3 to the variable before I apply the function, the function gets shifted to the left when we added 3. Whereas if I subtract from the variable, like minus 4 in this case, then that's going to cause the function to shift to the right. So adding to the variable causes the function to shift to the left. Subtracting from the variable causes the shift to be to the right. And so they try to sort of sum that up here with this picture, and it says the translation in this example here where they're saying, what if you subtracted d from the x variable before you plugged it into the sine or the cosine or whichever function you have? If we subtract d, it says the translation is d units to the right when d is greater than 0 and is d units to the left if d is less than 0. That's a little confusing. They're saying d is less than 0, but then they're subtracting it. So that's what leads to having a, a number added, uh, as we see in this left example here. Um, so I think the graph is probably the more helpful thing to look at here. They're showing if you add 3, it shifts 3 units to the left. If you subtract 4, it shifted 4 units to the right. So with circular functions, a horizontal translation is called a phase shift. And that's because, again, you're, you're shifting sort of what you might expect to be the beginning and the ending of a normal period. Because we have these phases or periods, you're shifting sort of the starting and ending point of that uh, that you might normally have as your period. So, for example, uh, if we had the sine function 
and we were looking at from 0 to 2 pi. And that, that would be my b for like sine of x. Then if I do sine of x minus 1, then that's, because we're subtracting, that's going to shift everything to the right. And so that particular 0 to 2 pi phase of the sine function would then go from 1 to 2 pi plus 1. And then you would get the exact same shift shape of the graph. It would get shifted to the right 1 if you subtract 1 from the variable that you plugged into the sine function. So in the function, y equals f of x minus d, they're referring to the part that got plugged into the function. The x minus d is called the argument. And so the argument is what you plugged into the function. So in my little example here, the argument is x minus 1. And because we have 1 subtracted from x in the argument, that caused a phase shift to the right of one unit. So a little bit of vocabulary here and an idea to get used to, but it is kind of similar to what we did in 4.1 when we did uh, amplitude uh, and uh, period adjustments. So in their nice example here, it says to graph y equals sine of x minus pi over 3 over 1 period. And so what they're pointing out here is you can imagine how the normal shape of one single um, period or phase of the sine function might be altered or translated by what they did here. So normally, if you would think I'm going to go from 0 to 2 pi to make one complete cycle of my sine function, because uh, it does say graph this over one period, so we're just going to pick that initial period. Well, then we would take that period and just move it over to the right. And they're sort of showing you could imagine in this equality that it's like you added pi over 3 plus pi over 3 to each part of this inequality, and that's why it moves it to the right. So what would have gone from 0 to 2 pi with, uh, with x, now instead when you add that minus pi over 3 there, when you go back to the x variable by sort of solving for x, that causes the start and ending points to end up having pi over 3 added to them and making them bigger. So that ends up to this right shift or right translation. So in this case, we have a right shift of pi over 3 to the, uh, to the 0 to 2 pi period that we might normally look at. So... Uh, once you know what a full cycle of pi period is, in this case, pi over 3 to 7 pi over 3, then you can chop that into four pieces so that you can get sort of the four phases of the sine function and see where they would land. So, for example, normally if we have 0 to 2 pi, then our four phases have a pi in the middle, and then you split that in two, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. And so then the function starts at 0 and goes up to 1, then back down to 0. And so it reaches its peak at the first quarter mark. At the halfway mark, it's back at 0. And then it goes down and back to 0 at the third quarter mark and the fourth quarter, quarter mark. So if they do that to the new period when everything got shifted to the right, then they'll basically show, all right, before you went from you uh, went from zero to pi over two to pi to three pi over two to two pi. If I take each of those values and add pi over three, since we're shifting to the right by pi over three now, then we get all of these values up here. And then if you plug those into the sine function, then you get the normal values of the sine function that you would have gotten at 0, pi over 2 pi, etc. But now you get those at pi over 3 through 7 pi over 3. So if we do that on a graph, then we could mark over those new things because it used to happen here, but now it goes to the right, pi over 3. And so now it starts at pi over 3 instead of starting at 0. 
and this is still a 2 pi period, but now the 2 pi difference between these two has been shifted to the right, so it starts at pi over 3 and finishes at 7 pi over 3. And then you can sketch in the graph, and that way you've got your, your graph by just simply making that translation of pi over 3 to the right. And similarly, if this was plus pi over 3, we would have done the same thing, but we would have shifted it to the left instead of to the right. So they're kind of showing, this was sort of a, an initial method, but they also say you could just take the graph that you originally would have had and just slide it to the right by pi over 3. It's kind of the same thing. Sine of x will be translated by pi over 3 units to the right. They're, they're trying to describe that as if they're different methods, but they're kind of doing the same thing here. So hopefully that's a good starting point to imagine how we could slide a function left or right. Uh, and they're going to give more examples of this and get them in a little bit fancier, like combine that with other things we've done. What if you slid it to the right but also multiply to change the period? But what I'd like to do is show how we might also slide it up or down. So I'm going to probably skip over a couple slides to indicate that. So here they have an example where it was shifted left by pi over 4. But also, because of this, we have the amplitude, instead of being 1, has now grown to 3. And so they should have shown that two-step process. Here's the shifting. And now you can see it's a bigger version of the one period of the cosine function. And it's, so it's got an amplitude of 3, but also it's been shifted to the left by pi over 4. And I'll leave you guys to look over that in more detail. Let's go down to where they talk about how you might have an up or down shift. Oh, look at this cloud. The slides sometimes are just kind of funny. Just look at that. <laughs> so there's supposed to be <laughs> some interval ranges there, and they got all lumped together on the slide. But anyway, they have a couple of examples here, but let's get down. Oh, there's a couple of these. Look at this. <laughs> so maybe the book would be a little bit better than the slides to look at these examples since these are drawn from the book. All right, so now let's look at vertical translations. That's where I was trying to get to. So with a vertical translation, the function is going to slide up or down. And just like with um, when we multiplied the function to change the amplitude of the period, the key thing when we're adding or subtracting is did you add or subtract from the argument, the part that was plugged into the function where the variable is, or did you add or subtract outside of the function? So what we're seeing here is the shift in the y direction is when you add or subtract outside of the function instead of inside the argument where the variable is. And so in this example here, the function has already happened, sine x, cosine x, or any function that you have there, and then you add 3, then that costs, causes a shift up by 3. So when you do it outside of the function, it's a little bit more in the direction you would expect. If you add a number, it goes up. If you subtract a number, it goes down. Whereas when you plug inside to the variable in the argument, then when you add a number, it goes left. And when you subtract a number, it goes right. So the example they show down here, they've added 5 outside of the function. And that caused the function to slide down 5 units. And so this is a vertical translation, and then we also looked at a horizontal translation when you do something inside the argument. So if I look at this example here, we have a couple of things going on. So because this is a lot like what we just did, they're just immediately going to start combining things together. So it says graph y equals 3 minus 2 cosine 3x over 2 periods. So basically, we would like to look at how the basic cosine function was modified. So what happens to cosine x? What is it that happens to cosine x here? So as we learned in 4.1, if you multiply inside the argument, if you multiply x by like a 3, that's going to cause the period to shrink by 3. That's going to mean you divide period by 3. 
divide the period by 3. If we, again from 4.1, if we multiply the function by negative 2, which is minus 2 cosine 3x, it's like multiplying cosine by negative 2, well, the 2 causes the amplitude to grow by a factor of 2, to double, and the minus sign causes the function to turn up upside down. So here I'm going to sum that up by saying flip and multiply amplitude by 2. And then lastly, there's this positive 3 that's been tacked on, um, and it's basically been added on the outside to this minus 2 cosine 3x function. And as we just were looking at here, if I add a number out front, like a 3 or a minus 5, that's going to cause a horizontal shift. So since we're adding 3, this is going to cause it to shift up 3. Shift up 3 units. So we can then look at these multiple things that were done to the basic cosine function and imagine how they would change the graph. And as I demonstrated more uh, when I was also jumping to the computer in 4.1, this can be easily sort of experimented with, explored, played with by using a nice quick graphing utility like Desmos or something like that where you can just add numbers and multiply and see how it moves the function around. So in this case, these three things are going to happen. Divide the period by three, which is going to make the period smaller, cause the bumps to happen three times as quickly, three times faster. We're going to flip the function because we're multiplying it by a negative so that the bumps that were at the top now flip down to the bottom. But we're also going to double the amplitude and make the function go instead of from negative 1 to positive 1 kind of a range. Now it would go from negative 2 to positive 2. But then we're going to even take that range of the amplitude and slide everything up by 3 units. So they're going to go through this a little bit step by step. And there you're going to show how you could make a table to find out what your new period is after you divide it by 3. So notice instead of going from 0 to 2 pi, it's 2 pi divided by 3 because they divided everything by 3. And so now what we're going to see here in this result is that the, the graph was upside down from where it normally would be because normally the cosine function starts with a positive number at the top of a bump and then goes down, where now cosine is starting at the bottom of the bump. It's, so it's been turned upside down. Instead of going one cycle going from 0 to 2 pi, it now only goes from 0 to 2 pi divided by 3. And um, we can see that it's been shifted up. The whole thing now, instead of going up and down above and below the x-axis, it now goes up and down above and below the line y equals 3 because that's three units up from the x-axis. And that's the, um, the, the, the shift upward or the vertical shift that we're seeing here. So the only thing they didn't do with this example was they didn't add or subtract from the argument to make a, um, a horizontal shift, which they talk about in the coming slides. But I'm going to go ahead and stop there. That's already plenty more, for an more than most people can absorb in an introduction. Um, so get started with that. Look at lots of examples. I definitely recommend that you use um, Desmos or some other graphing utility while you're exploring and experimenting with how these changes of the basic trig functions cause the graph to either um, expand or contract the period, grow or shrink the amplitude, and shift up and down or right to right, or right to left. Uh, there we go. Keep up the hard work and best of luck.